The following video is rated 18 plus and up. That means if you're not of age, kiddo, then would you kindly, please, piss off. Hey! Hi. How you doing? This is Ryan, and welcome back to the Gamertron Show. Now let's not beat around the bush and just get straight into it. Around early to mid-March this year, Subverse got its second significant content update in early access. I know I'm late to the party in covering this content as I was busy with other projects at the time, but hey, better late than never. Now this new update, the Terran update, brings with it, of course, a brand new waifu to Romance, the continuation of the main story quest, which includes a mountain amount of new dialogue, cutscenes, new unique set-piece gameplay for the shoot 'em up spaceship sequences and the turn-based strategy ground battles, tons of new side quests, memes, parody, lewd and crude, jokes galore, and a lot of new sex scenes. The long and short of it, <laughs> penis. If you like Subverse, this update is, of course, more subverse. So if you're a fan of what came before, you'll be happy to hear there's even more. But there are new features and gameplay mechanics added with this new update that laid down the foundation for deeper systems and mechanics, more variety, and even greater replayability. So now let's get into the nitty gritty titties, shall we? First up, of course, is the latest addition to the captain's crew, the new waifu joining the party, the quick, the courageous, the cute as hell cat girl, Terran Krast, an enthusiast in technology, a master thief, and an expert in stealth. Character-wise, Terran is very different from the rest of the waifus in the party. Whereas Demi, Lily, Kalizion, and Ella all possess very confident and commanding personalities. Terran, on the other hand, is more socially awkward and a bit more reserved, while still having a more playful, fun-loving side to her, coupled with an endearing desire for exploration and adventure. Studio Foe also once again continues to impress by layering around Terran's character with fascinating world-building and by making making her more relatable by having her backstory contain elements of real-world issues. But that's not what I'm getting at. You see, all those other girls were really naive about technology. Like one time, I saw a Nykif almost bite a bloke's hand off because he was watching a fishing show using a hollow projector on his wrist. We're still primarily a hunter-gatherer society. Using technology isn't forbidden, but it's looked down upon. I mean, when all you do is hunt, eat, swim, fight, and fuck all day, every day, would you give everything up to be exploited by the Imperium? Sounds like living the fucking dream to me. Oh yeah, it's great. Until you die from a freak nasal infection that a single pill from a real hospital could have cured. There's a reason why more of us are choosing to leave now than ever, Captain. Now, let's get this gate open. Right, but I specifically have an unfortunate and severe allergic reaction to such pheromones. Like, an uncontrollable urgency. I fail to see how the word unfortunate fits into that situation. Mm, think of it like Tourette's, uh, but fapping. Uh, it might seem funny at first, but in the wrong place at the wrong time, like you and me locked in a two-seater fighter while trying to sneak past a deadly security system. Yep, it's starting to come together for me now. Guilty is charged, love. Though, I must say, I do respect Taran quite a bit. Her endless wanking is both a disability and an addiction latent in her own biology, all wrapped up into one serious fat problem she can never solve. Her resume is impressive on its own. When you consider what she's accomplished in spite of her issues and the technological limitations of her species, to me, she's quite admirable. Karen is voiced by the lovely Millie Stern, at Stern Millie on Twitter. Please go follow her, send her some love, and let her know how much of an amazing job she did portraying Taryn. Thanks to the combination of Millie Stern's performance and the character writing, Taryn is a very easily likable character. And that's doubly so when it comes to her gameplay. We have yet again another banger. Holy shit, she is powerful. Possessing some really cool abilities and traits. Look at this shit. You have her two primary attacks to choose from, Pussy Pounce, leaps at an enemy and attacks them, then returns to her original location, buffing her defense and damage ratings. Sticky Fingers, attacks a single enemy and steals a random buff. 
So just with her two attacks alone, she's got mobility, high melee damage, and every time she attacks an enemy, she's only getting stronger in one way or another. Then we have her passive, which this alone just makes her so powerful, slippery, cannot be counterattacked. She cannot be counterattacked. Counterattacking is one of the biggest, most important mechanics in the real-time strategy combat. It's something you always have to account for, and she can't fucking be counterattacked. So not only when you have her engage enemies do you not have to worry about her taking significant damage if you go on the offensive, but every time you do go on the offensive, Terran's only getting stronger with random buffs for every time she attacks. Like, goddamn. That's so good! That's so good! Then we have both her ultimate abilities, one being a massive AoE attack and the other one just being a single target massive melee damage attack, with the added bonus of providing random buffs to all of your mantics when used. Oh my god, I just realized! Terran's a fucking paladin! Deals massive melee damage and supports her allies? She's a paladin archetype! Oh, that's so cool and crazy and kind of strange given it completely clashes with her character and aesthetic since she's all about being quick and stealthy but is far more of a DPS support unit? Just an interesting observation. Then we have her unique secondary attack that she brings to the shoot 'em up spaceship combat. A detonatable cluster homing rocket. Basically a unique variation and combination of the captain's default secondary fire and Ella's more recent homing shots can be definitely very effective and deadly if used properly. And while we're on the topic of gameplay, my hat is off to Studio Foe for continuing to surprise and impress me by growing and expanding Subverse's base gameplay mechanics and features. With the Terran update, we are introduced to a brand new spaceship stealth scenario, a new surprisingly challenging turn-based boss battle, and a whole new mechanic in D.Va mode. The entirety of Terran's spaceship stealth mission inside the Temple of Defilement is genuinely excellent gameplay. Maneuvering around traps and obstacles, managing the aura of sound you generate, standing still to become invisible and avoid detection by drones. The new mechanic of having to stay in a certain area of effect to drain your shields in order to interact with something in the environment. This is good gameplay, genuinely really good and creative gameplay, and it makes me so excited for the future of Subverse. Now that these mechanics and features are established, I can't wait to see how they'll be utilized in future missions and gameplay scenarios. There's just so much potential here. It's a real treat to see Studio Foe learning and growing as game devs. As for the already established shoot 'em up and turn-based strategy gameplay, we have several new background environments to do battle in, and a new enemy faction added with the Imperium, whose new units will kick your fucking ass if you're not careful. Whether or not they're just as, if not more deadly than the Cloy faction, is up for debate. Now moving on to the continuation of the story in this update, once again my mind was blown. God damn, things are escalating quickly. Just like the last update, I was not expecting the story to go the way that it did. Like holy shit, the ramifications of what happened in this chapter of the story are massive. Without spoiling too much if you haven't played this content yet already, we got some surprisingly appreciated character growth and development for the captain, a huge bombshell of information was dropped, a surprise encounter with one of the main antagonists, and Erarch? Erarch is still suspicious as fuck. I really genuinely cannot tell if he is going to stab us in the back or not. I am genuinely so excited and interested to see where the story goes next. Holy shit. You really don't know what to expect with each continuing chapter in this story. <sighs> oh boy. Now we come to all the new sex scenes. I don't know what the fuck to say here. I don't know how to judge this stuff. What do I say? What, what do I even say? Uh, uh, I guess there's certainly a lot more thrusting and bouncing. And jiggling, if you enjoy animated interactive pornography, there's more of it in the game now. Huzzah! So, uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know what the fuck else to say. <sighs> well, that's mostly all of the new content in the new Terran update in Subverse in Early Access. It's really great stuff. The game just keeps getting better and better. The game's scope and features and gameplay just keep expanding and changing in all of these positive ways. The game is bursting with potential for its future updates and the eventual 
release out of early access. My deepest congratulations to the cast and crew. You beautiful people just continue to keep kicking ass. Remember folks, if you're interested to check out the game on Steam, follow the devs and the beautiful voice cast on Twitter, your support means the world to them. It really does. Anyways, that's been another video. Thank you for watching. If you liked the video, please be sure to hit the like button, leave a comment in the comment section sharing your thoughts, feelings, and opinions, share the video on social media, Twitter, Reddit, and Facebook, and if you want to help out and support me directly, there are links to my Patreon and Ko-Fi in the description down below. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all later.